I think we've got everyone in the room who's, who's going to be in the room, and uh, any stragglers are late, so let, let, let's get started. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so uh, I'm uh, Khalid Aziz, and uh, uh, I have been working with Matthew uh, on a concept uh, uh, to share page tables uh, across processes. And please feel free to ask questions as they come up uh, while we are talking. So with that, I'll uh, hand over to Matthew to introduce the concept. Let me change the slide. I, I put up this, um, I, I, I drew this little diagram last night to illustrate the, the differences between what, what we already have and uh, what, what we intend to have uh, going forward. Uh, you know, we, 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 what, what's the difference between what we do and what we do with MShare? Um, so on, on, on the left there, you can see a pair of single-threaded processes. There are two MM structs. Each of them has a task struct, which points to the MM struct. Straightforward. In the middle there, we have a multi-threaded process. We all understand what a multi-threaded process is at this point, I would say. Um, that is, we've got three task structs, each of them pointing to a different part of the process because they're all executing in different parts of the uh, multi-threaded process address space. So the new stuff is on the right. We have uh, two independent MM structs. Each happens to be single-threaded. They don't have to be. They could be multi-threaded. Um, but they have this mshare region. And this mshare region points off into a third mm struct, which has no task structs pointing to it. It's, it's, not, it's not a thread. It has no threads. OK. So let's, let's look at what happens. Um, if you could start clicking uh, whenever it seems appropriate. So the, the, the first, the first uh, single-threaded process maps a uh, page with, using map shared. Hey, so we get a little, little, little red box. Now, and any modification that makes to it is going to be reflected with anyone else, like in the second process, which also calls mmap map shared. Great. Now, either of them can modify it, and they'll both see the other's modifications. Right. And then the third process, the, the, the multi-threaded process also maps it, map shared. And so the difference here is that if the, um, the first process calls mprotect to make it read only, it will still see the modifications from the other processes. But if the multi-threaded process calls mprotect, all three of those threads will not be able to write to it. Right? So the, 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 the other processes are deciding on their own ideas. But uh, just deciding on the, you know, for themselves what their protections are. But the multi-threaded process, one of these threads can decide for all of the others what are the protections on this, because they're all sharing the same area. OK, so now, now we're going to have um, the m-sharing tasks call mmap. Click. OK, and they all appear all at once. Right? This, this is mapped into everybody's address space all at the same time, because these are literally shared page tables. And so if any of them calls um, mprotect, again, that happens to all of them, just like with a multi-threaded process, except that in the purple areas, things aren't shared. But in the green area, everything is shared. And I apologize to anyone who's colorblind. By, by the green area, I mean the, the stuff that's labeled mshare region. <clears throat> so we're not talking about processes that don't know each other. We are talking about processes which have decided to cooperate with each other. We're talking about maybe uh, a web server that has decided it's going to have some shared chunks of memory and some not shared chunks of memory. Or we're talking about a <clears throat> database, maybe, that has some very special and unusual requirements. Um, but it's, it's not just you know, for our employer. Right? I, I, I think this is, this is a generally interesting thing to do. Um, Holly, do you want to take it away and talk about, a bit more about the implementation? Of course. OK, so um, uh, uh, as Matthew talked about this, uh, that uh, threads already share uh, page tables. Why don't we have cooperating processes share page tables as well? And uh, <clears throat> one of the big benefits uh, we see is that when you have got multiple uh, processes sharing the same pages, especially when we have thousands of processes, we are wasting a lot of space in each process keeping its own copy of page table entry. So uh, in order to solve that problem, 
uh, what we are proposing is the m share mechanism which is an opt in mechanism because the processes have to have certain level of trust between them uh, so uh, a process says i'm creating a, a, an m share region and i want to able uh, to be able to share it with everyone else and uh, uh, there will be uh, some uh, authentication mechanism, essentially permissions. Uh, so uh, whichever other process has the permission to share that region will be able to share it. So the process that's creating the MSHA region informs a kernel, then uh, it starts mapping objects in that region. Uh, and uh, any other process that has a permission to access that MSHA region can then map that region into its own address space and get access to all of the objects that are currently mapped in there and then uh, be able to re read and write to those regions. Um, so uh, uh, I have sent out a couple of past series and um, we started out with an API uh, that is um, a combination of uh, an in memory file system and a system call and based upon the feedback, uh, um, I'm now working on uh, an API that looks more like this. Uh, the implementation adds a new in-memory uh, file system, mshareFS. So you mount this uh, uh, file system, and when you uh, mount that uh, file system, now you can open files uh, into that uh, file system. Opening a file into that uh, file system creates a, an mshare region. And the name of the file is what you refer to the m share region as for the other processes to be able to attach to that m share region. Um, so a process creates a new file in there, and then it can uh, m map the FT it gets back from the file system. Uh, when it does the m map, that's when uh, we know what the extent of that region is, like starting address and the size. And uh, at that point, uh, the region is uh, uh, defined. And now another file, uh, process can come in open that same file in mshareFS, and then map that FD in its address space. Uh, so now uh, all of the objects that were in the mshare region become uh, visible to this new process. And when a process is uh, done with its interest in the mshare region, uh, it can simply call an unlink uh, on the file. And when the last reference uh, to the mshare region is removed, the file is removed. So uh, I have started out with an initial uh, um, uh, implementation where the focus is on getting the core functionality working and then uh, expand um, uh, it as uh, need arises. So uh, one of the questions is, what is the size of the region, minimum size of the region we want to share? I have it started out with a page or size, which is fairly large, but uh, uh, it keeps things simple for now. Uh, but we can uh, potentially look at uh, sharing at a uh, part or PMD uh, sizes as well. So uh, what that implies is a process that wants to share uh, an mshare region, it wants to map uh, uh, the mshare region in its address space, it has to know uh, what is the size and alignment requirement we are looking at for this specific uh, region. So uh, when you mount mshare FS, uh, it will populate a file mshare info that will provide that information. You just open that, read it, and you have the size and alignment requirement. So uh, once a uh, process has created a file and uh, in effect created a new mshare region, uh, what happens is that the open causes a new mm struct uh, to be allocated. This mm struct, uh, as Matthew pointed out, is not uh, assigned to a task. It's uh, it stands on its own. This MM struct is primarily used to hold all of the VMAs that represent the mshare region, and it also holds uh, all of the uh, page tables uh, for that uh, mshare region. And then uh, when the first mmap uh, happens, if the process that is doing that mmap already has objects mapped in that region, will copy over all of the VMAs from that creating process into uh, this new MM struct, uh, and then uh, we set a, a new flag, VM shared PT, on each of the VMAs that uh, now correlate uh, with the M shared region. And then uh, um, currently, I also change the VM MM pointer uh, uh, to point to this new VM, uh, 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 this new MM struct. So I have a picture. Let me bring that up. Ah, this one. So uh, you have, um, uh, say, a, a process. 
uh, it has its own MM structure. It has got a bunch of VMAs in there. Uh, each VMA will have its VM MM pointing back to its own MM structure, except for the VMA that maps onto the M share uh, region. And that VMA will have its VM MM pointing to the uh, MM struct for the M share region, as well as the VM shared PT uh, flag set on it. Uh, so when uh, a page fault occurs, uh, we look up the VMA uh, where the page fault occurred. And if the VM shared PT uh, flag is set on that VMA, we know it's an M shared uh, region. So we go to the M shared uh, MM instruct instead and continue the page fault handling from there. So as a result, we will bring in all the page tables from the shared region. And um, that's where uh, we'll uh, operate on all of these VMAs. Okay, so I have a, a basically working implementation, but there are still a lot of loose ends uh, that uh, should be tied up and uh, questions that uh, we have that uh, we are trying to answer as we go through this process. Um, granularity, I already addressed that, something to look, uh, look at. API, um, as we have today, uh, one of the questions is, does that do the job? Is it sufficient? Is it reasonable and maintainable? And then mm, when we look at uh, M mapping these uh, M share regions, um, currently our intent is to allow M mapping only the entire region, but should we be looking at uh, uh, allowing a map of uh, partial regions? And then uh, uh, same thing happens even on the uh, M unmap. And when a, a process uh, does an unmap, uh, do we uh, force it to unmap the entire region or can it leave some regions still mapped in? Uh, then also, how would a process map in new objects? So uh, we need to look into how to support M remap. Uh, when the process that created the original M shared region, uh, it, uh, it potentially had uh, objects mapped in there, but another process that's not sharing that region could potentially unmap the existing object and map in a new one. Uh, so uh, we should possibly support that. Uh, there's a question of, do we allow these m shared regions to stack on top of each other, which makes it very interesting. Uh, and, that, uh, and then uh, we have a potential interaction of these regions with user fault FT. Um, how do we support that? Or do we say, no, you, you can't use user default FD with the M-share regions? So any questions at this point? Yeah. Yes, we do. Can I get Michael, it? Mike. Yep. Oh, OK, I, I've got a microphone. Uh, so I, I still haven't wrapped my head around this thing. It sounds scary uh, a lot, uh, because uh, um, we have that natural kind of um, one process has a mm struct. Uh, so what happens, who is in charge of that kind of address space? So uh, how do we do accounting? Uh, um, if you try to M map, map, map fix into a area that it's conflicting in what happens or what happens, does it happen to everybody who is sharing that MM? So there are very, very many questions that I I don't know where, where to start. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's entirely fair. I mean, the, I, I think to a large point is it's the same as if they were threaded, like fully threaded. I, I, I don't think this is being partially threaded, right? The, 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 these, these two processes are s somewhat threaded with each other. They, 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 they share that chunk of their address space, and so for that chunk of their address space, they behave as if they were threads of the same process, but for the rest of it, it's, it's uh, independent, they're independent processes. Yeah, right, I'm not really sure that answering questions. I, th I, think, that I think it answers your map fixed question. Mm -hmm. Yes, so let's say that you're map fixing into that, a conflicting area, does that really mean that you are map fixing to everybody sharing that thing? Yes. <sighs> okay, I thought that, uh, clone VM without clone uh, thread uh, or uh, seek hand or um, what's that combination when you essentially share your MM without sharing a common understanding of signals was the biggest sin. This <laughs> seems to be going beyond that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> Right. So, so uh, now we do have um, uh, two dis disjointed processes that are uh, uh, sharing uh, parts of their address space, uh, uh, which is why there are more questions. And one of the questions on the next slide is security. Um, what kind of uh, security issues uh, this raises? Um, so you are right that uh, there are uh, a number of these issues that we do have to address uh, as we go along. Um, so uh, in my mind, the big question is, is the concept useful? Um, and uh, is the way we are thinking about it uh, reasonable? And then uh, can we address the potential issues that come up? Regarding the API, is file system a must? A Maybe a system calls it returns file descriptor and then cooperating processing processes can SCM rights share it and uh, it no, will do. That was my original design. Um, yes. <laughs> and, and, and the original API did not survive first contact with the enemy, I mean the user. Um, they, they, they did not enjoy the SCM rights, SCM rights approach. They, they, they want Lamers. to have a name in a file system. <laughs> Um, and having a name in a file system, I mean, it gives you a little bit more, it gives you the enumerability, which, which M-share regions actually exist, um, which otherwise, you know, with, with just FDs, I mean, you can use F-user, I guess, but there's, there's a lot of scanning to do to find out which M-share, which shared regions exist. Right, and uh, FD-based uh, API, um, one of the issues that was pointed out with that was now, it becomes a client server model. So we have to have a server that holds that FD that can pass it to clients using SCM rights. And now we have built a bottleneck. I, I just wanted to add about the API that I, I knew there was evil underneath, but the API struck me as a really elegant thing. It looked like a, a version two, you know, after you already considered the usual approaches. So I, I was shocked and refreshed to see the API. So if you do it, please, my vote is for that one. Thank you. Uh, Dan's got a question too. Yeah, I see some questions on, in the chat. Um, people are asking about, uh, does it work with Gazer Pages fast? How do you do the, the accounting for, for pinning pages with this? Uh, so right now, I'm focusing on the uh, core functionality. And uh, Get User Pages Fast is uh, on my list of things to address. Uh, but yes. Uh, uh, the goal is to make it work with that as well. Uh, we have a question on the far table there. So, so in general, I think this is a pretty interesting concept, but it, I, I agree that it's scary. So I, I was wondering if, you, if we could come up with some kind of whitelist, what you can actually do with, with something like that. Meaning, for example, if you want to do an M lock, like, no, that's not going to happen. If you want to map private memory, that's not going to happen, like, until we fully explored the problem space. So you would actually start with a whitelist that is fairly yeah, small, but gets the job done. And as we go, we actually, like, unlock features. And once we know what we're actually dealing with, and that might be, like, one part of the issue to page pinning. Yeah, we don't support it there, for example. Maybe, maybe that could be one approach. To move forward because it is scary. I mean, <laughs> not gonna lie. Yeah, I mean, our, our, our customers' requirement is um, with DAX, right? They 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 they, they didn't want to have you know terabytes of, of memory that they were m mapping and using more terabytes of memory for page tables than they were getting in actual storage, um, because that, that that if you do the calculations with about ten thousand processes, that's where you end up about twice as many bytes used for page tables as, as you do for actual um, uh, uh, storage. So that wasn't great, and I, I mean, it totally, under, totally understood why. So, but we, we, so the, the original request was, hey, make, give DAX the same functionality as huge TLBFS. And we all kind of got a bit twitchy because everybody hates huge TLBFS. And so it's like, OK, what, what, what can we do instead? What can we do to make this not awful? Um, and this is what we came up with. 
something diff different, different awfulness. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I, I, think, I think this is kind of interesting. Right? So we, we, we're interested in the concept of we have an MM struct with no, with no threads attached to it, but we do have a file descriptor for it. So now we have a file descriptor for an MM struct. And what can we do with that concept? Like, could, could, could we make system faster or better? Because now, 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 that, you, now that you could implement the, the system libc call by saying, okay, start create a new mm struct and then start adding things to it and then say okay now you have and then breathe life into it and have it go off and be that new thing rather than rather than forking and copying all your vmas and copying all your file descriptors if we had a way to say okay let's let's, let's create a process over here it doesn't have any life but we'll, we'll inject file descriptors into it and we'll do various things to it and then set it going. I think that could be a really interesting concept. It so, sounds to me like Frank, Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> lot, it sounds to you like what, sorry? Uh, like Frankenstein's monster. Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you, you kind of sew it, it but, but clone is like that, right? You, you, you sew a process together from various different things. I, I, I think Frankenstein w w would have loved us. <laughs> Right? <laughs> a misunderstood genius, just like us. <laughs> Maybe if you come up with a, a, a new model and a name for this, instead of just limiting it to, okay, here's a new mechanism, isn't it fascinating? But maybe go one step further, since it, you can't just have random stuff floating around without a model, really, because then it's too hard to think about security. But if you said, well, this is a new thing, let's call it, I don't know, a lightweight process or a Frankenstein process or come up with something and then here are the rules for that and they just happen to match exactly what you're doing here that might be more acceptable um, even though it seems bolder it, it I think it would help so so my question would be um, as I said I, I cannot really comprehend the uh, consequences of, of this because so uh, this is just beyond any imagination, but uh, uh, can you can you explain what's the actual? I, I you said that you really hate uh, huge DLBFS, but uh, uh, can you explain why this cannot be uh, done through a mapping so that uh, you actually have something that is really um, specific to uh, that at risk uh, range, for example? So why cannot you really share on the per mapping basis. So essentially just abstract what uh, the huge DLBFS is doing in somehow more shareable way. I mean, that's ugly, right? But that's level, the level of ugliness is somewhere else than a uh, unbound number of MM structs uh, in something that barely resembles a process. Okay, so when we are looking for different semantics, when when you start talking about sharing page tables, you go but you go back to the different semantics that you have for, for example, mProtect, and and the customer does in fact want to do mProtect, and it wants the semantics I described, uh, that if if you mProtect it in one task, it becomes mProtected for all tasks that, that are sharing it, right? So that, that that's a feature, not a bug. They want, to, they want to literally share the page tables. They want it to be as if it were threaded for that chunk of their address space. They just don't want to use threads because uh, MMAP stem sucks. And obviously, we're trying to fix that a different way. But I mean, for now, MMAP stem sucks. So I, I, I don't know that yet. Uh, we definitely don't want to make it so that if you call mmap map shared you magically get these new semantics because that will break existing programs that are not expecting to say oh somebody else called mprotect and now i can't read this or, or write to this, this this page that that's got to be opt-in semantics which means at least a new flag to mmap if not a new syscall and so i thought it was clearer to be more open about we are going to share this region of the address space than it was to say, if you use this magic flag to MMAP, then 
the chunk of your address space which contains this mapping is now shared with everybody else. Exactly. The, uh, this makes it very explicit that a process is choosing to do that as opposed to side, a side effect of a system call that they were already making before. Um, so it becomes a deliberate decision to opt into this mechanism. So how many how many of these shared regions are supported per process? An unlimited, unbounded, or is it just the one? There's no particular limit. Um, I mean, you know, you, you can create as many sh files in mshareFS as you want. Um, that wouldn't be typically what I would expect to see a program do. Uh, what I would expect to see a program do is say, I, I, I want this very large chunk of my address space to be shared. And then they can map several smaller things in it. You, and and they, they can be a mixture of map private, map shared, files, anon, all kinds of, you can put all kinds of things in there. Um, but you have to choose to put them in there. Like if, if you just call mmap and, and, you, and you don't specify anything, it definitely goes into one of the private bits of your address space. It, it doesn't sometimes invisibly pushed into the shared region because that would be a horribly stupid thing to do. Yeah, well, but, well, it's just the unbounded question is kind of why, why I thought of this. Like, would it be better to just have one possible mshare versus an unlimited and maybe not have the VMA pointing to it but some other mechanism to say there's also shared and a special VMA of some type that just blocks it off as opposed to uh, I'm just thinking of what what the VMA um, MM struct pointer is used for and how entangled into the system that is right now, uh, how much will change or will need to change to support this. Right. So, 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 so just, just, just to amplify on that, Liam, you, what, what, you're, what you're talking about here is something like, uh, we, we tried to do a write into a read-only VMA, and now we need to send a signal, but we, we stop at the MM struct, which is shared, and now which process do we actually send that sig, the, the, the SIG bus to? That kind of thing, right? Yeah, and who, who owns the thing can also find VMA rather than find MM. <laughs> um, uh, Jason has some comments. Um, uh, Jason, would you like to go um, live and uh, explain what you're saying, or should I just read that? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Oh, wow. Thank you. Uh, I was just wondering, Matthew, I was listening to you talk about the use case for DAX, and I, I was thinking maybe there's some way to, to like, make the DAX files hold the page tables, basically. Oh, you're well, shaking okay, your so head. I can see you on video. <laughs> well, okay. So, so, so that, that's... That's kind of what we're considering doing for huge TLBFS. Uh, right now, huge TLBFS goes around and, and looks at other processes, see if anybody else has it mapped and, and shares their page table with them, um, rather than storing the page table pointers in the inode. So um, I, I meant to suggest this to Mike, but I only thought of this this morning when I was out for my run and uh, haven't had a chance to chat to Mike yet. So this is probably quite a surprise to him. Um, <laughs> um, But it seems to have sort of an, a conceptual appeal. Like if you could say, when I instantiate a VMA and I go to install all the pages, like maybe instead of installing a bunch of pages, maybe I just get one, like a P4D or something like that, something big, and and it's just owned by the VMA or the inode or whatever mechanism is underneath, and all the reference counting kind of follows that. So you just install the one thing, and it you know follows along naturally. You get the file system access that, that you wanted from your customer. Um, yeah. yeah, so essentially the huge DLB FS concept, but somehow abstracted, right? Yeah, I mean, we could do that. But, but again, I think we still need some opt-in from the process to this because they need to understand the, the new Emprotec semantics. It still yes. can be the well, MCR yes. API. <laughs> sorry, Jason. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, would it have to be like a new MMAP option, like MMAP shared? 
protections. Goodness, we have so many MMAP flags left. <laughs> but, but I think I think the the opt-in and the API is not really necessary tied to the necessity to have uh, additional MM struct. Uh, so you can have the mshare API like uh, Khalid suggested, and then create some different kind of object instead of full-blown MM to just uh, link it from VMAs that are shared and to signify that uh, there is uh, the sharing mechanism going on there. That is potentially uh, possible. Uh, keeping, uh, creating a different uh, separate MM struct does simplify being able to use that uh, existing mechanism uh, for uh, managing all of the page tables. But yeah, it's a, an abbreviated MM struct that we are using uh, just as a container because we have simple way to manipulate it using existing functions. Dan? Yeah, I mean, we, we did add the map, sh map shared validate flag to allow for map sync. So like we actually get some, we have, maybe I think we still have room there to, have a MMAP flag that will fail if it's not supported and, and works. So if, if you want to do a new, new MMAP, it's not, I don't think it's impossible. Okay, that's, that's something to consider. Your thoughts, Matthew? You know, I'm, if, 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 if people are just too scared of this feature, then we, we, we can go back to doing something else. I, I, I just thought it was a really interesting idea to say, you know, we, we, we'll take these two processes and be partially threaded between them. I, I thought that was worth exploring. But, um, you know, if, if, if it turns out to be in search of a user, then, you know, we, we, we can do something simpler. OK. Yeah, so we are reaching the uh, end of our time. So, uh, how about this? I'm um, uh, getting ready to send out uh, the next version of the patch uh, in the next two weeks or so. So, uh, feel free to comment, give us more feedback, and we'll tear it apart from there. Ian, you uh, wanted to say something? Yeah, I just wanted. So, <laughs> Matthew said that actually the reason why the application doesn't fully go through it is the uh, map sam, but then won't we have actually very similar problems with contention on maps and of the like shared mm yeah because basically where where we have this m shared region then basically we have to have some synchronization again of changes which are presumably going to happen under maps and of the like m share mm struct yeah and then we have basically the same maps and contention issues there as we would have like in the threaded case or Thank you, Jan. I knew somebody was going to bring that up, so thank you for doing it. Um, <laughs> to a certain extent, yes. To a certain extent, no. I mean, the, these processes don't just have um, the big M shared region. I mean, if, if all of the M protect, M lock, M unlock, whatever activity was happening on that region, then yes, you'd be right. But they also have that, the other stuff going on, which actually is private to that thread. Uh, and so effectively, okay. we've split the MMAP SEM in half, half. Um, and if it's, if it's like 80-20 in one direction or the other, then you know, you're going to see some amount of improvement or disimprovement. But the key is that they get to choose. <laughs> they get to ask for it. Yeah, and so to that is actually second question. So instead of like providing this M shared reason, wouldn't it be better to like provide the way to a thread to set aside part of address space where you know it would be really thread private, and then we would we could do simple locking there, like without like all the M ups and dances essentially, because we know it's thread local. Man, it's like talking to a version of myself from 12 months ago. Yeah, we, we, have, we, we absolutely considered that, and we talked about it. Um, but we ended up deciding that, well, if, if, if you let a thread set a, have its own MM struct, isn't that essentially the same thing? I, 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 aren't we just doing the same thing, but in reverse? Well, so I think easy. conceptually, it might be easier to grasp, grasp the situation that, you know, this range of address space is thread private to a particular thread, and we, sim 
we don't do you know mmaps and mmaps and locking there essentially then it is to grasp the concept of shared mm struct yeah so i guess <laughs> yeah, i i, I'm I kind of I'm sorry, yep. but I have to cut it here because we are overflowing to the next slot. And uh, this seems like uh, more questions we ask, the more questions we get. So uh, yeah, it's definitely interesting, but. Um, that, that, that's fine. More, more, we, we can always continue the discussion on the mailing list. Right, right. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much.